chapter title of this is Lost at Sea. And it's the whole idea of getting lost and being able to describe exactly where you are. If I asked anybody here to describe for me where is that red X in relation to this grid here? I might say, someone might say, oh, well, you go four boxes over and two boxes up and it's there. And they're perfectly correct. I might have someone say, you move, you go to the end, you move two up. And again, they're perfectly correct. Someone else might say, you go up two and you go over four. And again, they are correct. But what we want to do is we want to be able to come up with a universal way that everyone would describe this X in the same way. And so what mathematicians came up with is they came up with a grid method called coordinates. Okay, and what they did first was they labelled both vertices or both sides 1 to 5 upwards and 1 to 5 acrosswards. And they said, okay, if I want to be able to explain this point, how would I describe it? Well, they labelled these axes here, and the word axes just means lines on a graph. So they decided that they would call this first line here the y-axis. And this bottom line here, I'm going to do in red, the x-axis. And so every graph we draw, we must label our y and our x-axis. And they said, okay, we're going to use coordinates to give the definition of where this purple circle is. And a coordinate will have two values. And in this value here, I'll write the x value. And in this value here, I'll write the y value. So the x value is always the horizontal line here. So if I go across, I can see that the x value of this line is 3. And then the y value is obviously this one up here. And the y value of this line is 3. So that is the point 3, 3. And universally, all students who studied mathematics will now describe that as the point 3, 3. If I was to do this red dot here, and ask to describe where is that, my red dot is, again, we always do the x value first, so on the x value it's 1, and on the y value it's in number 2. So the coordinate is 1, 2. Okay, so we're going to have a look at some coordinates here. And we're given um, a grid, this time the y-axis goes up as far as 6 and the x-axis goes over as far as 8. And we are asked to give the coordinates of the lake. So again, I always do the x one first, so x, y, and you can remember that as in x comes be first in the alphabet. If you were to say the alphabet, it would be x, y, and z. So the x comes first, we obviously don't use the z, so the x along the corridor, so we go along as far as 2, that's where the lake is, and up as far as 1. So the point for the lake is 2, 1. The cave is next, so we go along as far as 4 on the x-axis, and up as far as 1 on the y-axis, so it is the point 4, 1. The wood is along as far as 3, up as far as 4, so it is 3, 4. And the hill is along as far as 4, up as far as 5, so that is the point 4, 5. Okay, so hopefully that is making sense. Now, the grid I just spoke about there had one line saying the y-axis and another line saying the x-axis, the y and the x. But you can see here that if we were to extend this line here, if we were to extend the line across, what would we be entering if this was a ruler? Well, this would be 0 and this would be minus 1, minus 2 and so on. 
So you can see here that this is actually the extension of the grid. So mathematicians realized that that grid was too small and they'd also need to go in this direction as well. And obviously, you're going to see what's going to happen now next. They ended up needing a four grid. So there are a few keywords that I want to chat about here. The okay, so it's really important we understand the following keywords. Well, the first one we've met already, which is the x-axis. And the x-axis stands for this line here, the horizontal line. So I'm going to place the x-axis just here so we know that that's where that goes. The next one is the y-axis. And on every graph I draw, the y-axis is the vertical one. And I always try and remember, do you see the way there's a little bit of a straight line in the y? So that that's the straight line here. The coordinate plane, well this actually, this whole grid is called the coordinate plane. Okay. The origin is a new word and the origin stands for this point here in the middle, which is the point zero on the x-axis and on the y-axis you've got three, two, one, so it's also zero. So that point in the middle is zero, zero, where the two lines meet and in mathematics we refer to that as the origin. The next keyword we want to chat about is this keyword quadrant and you will spot that the way these horizontal and vertical lines are means that there are four quadrants within the coordinate plane. So quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And we just go in an anti-clockwise rotation there. So a couple of other words I've used today are vertical and horizontal and vertical stands for a line that is straight up so when we're standing we are vertical and horizontal is when we're lying down and that is horizontal so those two words I've used quite a bit when describing the y-axis is the vertical axis and remember axis just means a line on a grid and the x-axis is the horizontal axis the last keyword then is a point or a coordinate point and so I'm just going to place it along here. That is the point along as far as 3, down as far as minus 4, so that is the point 3 and minus 4. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is to draw out the previous slide again and mark in all the important keywords I spoke about. Make sure your graph is nice and neat and leave the same amount of space between all your numbers. So I do not want to see anything like this, which shows it unorganized, messy, and not even. Okay, I want to see much neater graphs. Okay, so this next question asks me to give the coordinates of the following points. So I need to give the coordinate of A, and remember, I'll always have my brackets and my comma in between. And the first one here, the one that goes in this part here, is my x value, and here is my y value. So I'm going to label my x and y axes. Okay, you see I've marked them in there. And they should be marked in on every single grid you draw. Okay, so the first one is this A1 here, and I'm going to look along the x-axis. So on the x-axis, I go to minus 3. And on the y-axis, I go down as far as minus 3. So that is the point minus 3, minus 3. B, on the x-axis, I go as far as 4, and I go up to 1. So it's 4 and 1. C, I will be going along as far as 3, down as far as minus 3. So 3 and minus 3. And then the last one is D, I will go along as far as minus 2 and up as far as 4. So it is the point minus 2, 4. So generally we will always be dealing with the 4 quadrant graph. Okay, so tonight's learning check is what are the coordinates of the following places? And remember you're going to have to label your y axes and x axes. I'd like you to draw this grid out and mark in the wood, the mine, the cave and the lake and then beside it write the coordinates and I'll see everybody tomorrow.